Hi, welcome back to our series on policy files. In the last video, we saw how to create a basic policy file with a run list and test it using Test Kitchen. In this video, we are going to progress by pushing the policy to our Chef server and configuring the servers to run the policy by bootstrapping them with the policy. We will also show the process of promoting a policy between environments so that you can have a safe and consistent method of making your changes to production systems. The first step in the process for managing our nodes with Chef Server is to push the policy we have defined to the server. We do this with the chef push command. This command requires two parts, the policy lock file that was generated and a policy group to push it to. What this command does behind the scenes is read the policy lock file and then upload the files from the cache that was made when we ran chef install and chef update, checking that the checksums match. They are then stored on the chef server as an artifact that can be retrieved later, again with the checksum validation. Next in the process is to get chef onto our nodes. This is a process called bootstrapping. We use a different utility for this, the knife command. Knife has traditionally been the utility for interacting with the Chef server and is still used for node manipulation along with policy files. The Knife Bootstrap command takes a number of options, but it's in its simplest form, just the host name of the node is required along with the node name. Credentials are also required. We have set some of these up in the SSH config for clarity. We can see the Bootstrap process installed Chef Client and performs an initial client run, which does nothing as we didn't configure the policy. If we take a quick look at Automate, we can see the successful client run. As we drill into the node, we can currently see there are no resources and no run list. This is as expected as we haven't configured our node yet beyond bootstrapping. We can do this after bootstrapping with the knife node command. This is useful as it also allows us to convert systems previously running with the traditional run list method to using policy files. Knife node policy set takes three arguments, the node name, the policy group and the policy name. Note that the policy name is the name we set in the policy file, not the name of the file. This runs and reports success, but to take effect, Chef Client needs to be run. We will do this remotely with SSH. As this runs, we can see the output of our changes to the system, just as we saw in Test Kitchen. Now we can bootstrap and harden our other two staging nodes. Rather than do this with three commands as we did earlier, we can do it in one go, with the policy being set as part of the bootstrap command. We will do this for each of the remaining two nodes in turn. These commands are the same as the previous bootstrap, but with the policy group and name added to the command. This means that the initial run of Chef Client, rather than doing nothing as we saw the first time, will perform the changes that we require for hardening. Now this has all been completed, we can check automate and see the successful completion and the compliance checks are passing. Now we come to the process of promotion. The idea here is that we use the same policy lock file for production that we used on staging. Obviously here it is simple as we only have recently created it, however in reality some time will have passed so the lock file may not be easily to hand. There are a couple of ways to deal with this. Ideally, you will commit the lock file to version control as part of your workflow and retrieve it again for the next environment. However, in some cases this isn't possible and I will show you another way to promote the policy through environments. We use three commands to do this. First of all, the chef show policy command which will download the policy from the chef server and save it to a file. Next, using the chef install command, as we did before, we will fetch the cookbooks and store them in the local cache. By passing the lock file to chef install, rather than the Ruby file, it will not be trying to recreate the lock file, but instead using it to retrieve the exact versions that we had in the policy originally. Finally, we will push this lock file to the new group on the chef server as before. Once this is complete, we can now deploy onto our production servers and complete the hardening process. And now with a final look at Automate, we can see all of our nodes are hardened as we expected. Thank you for watching this demo. To recap, we have used Chef to now configure both our staging and production systems to harden them following a structured, safe method to ensure testing, allowing us to move at velocity. In the final video of this series, we will demonstrate making further changes, setting attributes, and how the process prevents changes happening on systems before you expect. Thank you again for watching, and keep checking out the great material on LearnChef Rally.